Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rupyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita nam pavan hebyo vaishna vibyo namo namaha. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Shri Advaita Gadadhar. Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hari Hari. So we're going through the Krishna book and we're on chapter number 43, which is the killing of the elephant, Kuvalaya Pida. So we heard how Lord Krishna had come to Mathura along with Balaram and then all the cowherd men had also come and joined them there in Mathura. And then we heard how Lord Krishna had broken the bow at the sacrificial arena so that was the day before the wrestling match. So the next morning, Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram finished taking their baths and all their other morning duties and they could hear the beating of the drums announcing the wrestling match. So the wrestling match was announced and Krishna and Balaram understood they could, should immediately prepare themselves and go to the place where the match was to take place. But when Krishna and Balaram came there, when they reached the gate of the arena, there was a big elephant in front blocking the entrance. So this elephant is known by the name Kuvalaya Pida. And there was a caretaker riding on top of the elephant. And the caretaker was making the elephant block the entrance. Yeah, the caretaker, for some reason, was very, he was a servant of Kamsa and he had been instructed to block Krishna and Balaram, not to let them in. So 
Lord Krishna understood what was happening and he saw the nasty mood of the caretaker on top of the elephant. So Krishna prepared himself to combat, to fight with this elephant and he tightened his cloth and tightened his dress because, you know, you're going to fight with someone, you don't want to have your clothes slack, you want to have your clothes tight around your body. So, Lord Krishna spoke to the man on top of the elephant in a very strong voice. He spoke like, like, it, was a, like it was the thunder of a cloud. So, Lord Krishna said to the man, he said, You rascal, give, get out of my way, let me get through the gate. If you don't get out of my way, then I will send you and your elephant to the house of death personified. So the man on top of the elephant was insulted by Lord Krishna, he became very angry. So he was prepared for this and he purposely, he, he got the, he made the elephant very angry. And he, he carries a metal rod with him which he controls the elephant. So he stuck that rod in the elephant to make the elephant angry and the elephant began, came to attack Krishna. So the elephant came rushing towards Krishna. It tried to catch Krishna with his trunk. <coughs> but Krishna was too quick for the elephant and Krishna moved out of the way and he went behind the elephant. So elephant cannot see very far and cannot see behind itself, couldn't see what's behind. It can only see to the end of his trunk. It couldn't see Krishna hiding behind its legs. It was trying to smell Krishna. Was, by smell he was trying to catch Krishna. He used his trunk to try to capture him. But Krishna was too quick and Krishna could escape. And this time he came behind the elephant and he caught hold of the tail of the elephant. So Krishna pulled, he pulled the tail of the elephant with great strength and he with all his strength, Krishna pulled the elephant and he dragged it 25 yards. 
แล้วคริชนาก็ใช้พลังงานดึงหางของช้างเนี่ยแล้วก็ดึงมันมาไปอย่างน้อย25หลา Just like Garuda would catch a snake, and Garuda, when he catches a snake, he could drag the snake also a distance. So Krishna dragged the elephant. When he was a small boy in the yard of Nanda Maharaj, he used to take the tail of the calf. And he would pull the tail of the calf. And so the same way Krishna pulled the elephant, he would pull it to the left, then to the right, and then to the left, then to the right. And then Krishna went in front of the elephant. He came and stood in front of the elephant, and he gave it a, a hard slap. And then he ran. He ran away from the elephant's eyesight and ran behind it. And then he fell on the ground, and Krishna purposely lay on the ground, placing himself in front of the elephant's two legs. And when, with Krishna laying in front of the elephant, with his legs tripped, and the elephant fell over. So Krishna immediately got up, but the elephant thought that Krishna was still laying on the ground. So the elephant came with his tusk. It had big ivory tusks, and he tried to push his tusks into the body of Krishna, but Krishna was not there. So he put his tusks instead of putting them into Krishna. He just put his tusks into the ground. <coughs> So the elephant was angry, and the caretaker, the man in charge of the elephant, who was riding on the elephant, he tried to make the elephant more angry. So the elephant came rushing towards Krishna. But Krishna caught hold of the trunk of the elephant, and he pulled the elephant down. And the man on top of the elephant, he also fell down. So when the elephant fell down, Krishna jumped on top of the elephant, and he broke off one of his tusks. And he used that tusk to kill the elephant, and he killed the man who was taking care of the elephant also. So Krishna took that tusk and he carried it on his shoulder, like a weapon. 
ก็บงานนั้นไว้กับตัวเองเหมือนกับเป็นอาวุธของการ So Krishna was decorated. He had he had he was perspiring. He was sweating from killing the elephant. He was sweating because he'd been running around back and forth, hiding from the elephant and playing with the elephant. So he 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 was sweating, and with his sweat there was also drops of blood from when he killed the elephant. So he looked very beautiful with the perspiration and the blood. <laughs> แล้วก็หลังจากที่กฤษณาเสร็จการสังหารไปเนี่ยปรากฏว่ากฤษณาก็จะเหนื่อยแล้วก็จะมีเหงื่อแต่ซึ่งปนไปกับเลือดของช้างในที่สังหารไปเนี่ยทำให้พระองค์เนี่ยทรงดูสง่างามมาก So Lord Balaram took the other tusk of the elephant on his shoulder and together they went into the arena accompanied with all the cowherd boys So when Krishna came into the arena along with Balaram, all the different people were sitting there in the in the arena waiting to see them. And so th there were many different people. So Krishna appeared differently to the different people. Some people were friends, and some people were not friends. They had different relationships with him. So Krishna enjoys all the different relationships with these different people. Some are good and some are not good. Just like there were big wrestlers, professional wrestlers, waiting to fight with Krishna, so Krishna appeared to them just like a thunderbolt. And to the people in general, he appeared as the most beautiful personality. And to the females, to all the females there, he appeared to be the most attractive male, the personification of Cupid. So all these ladies, just by seeing Krishna, they became, they became more lusty when they saw Krishna. And then the cowherd men, they had come there with Krishna. They were also present. They were looking upon Krishna as their own kinsman. Yeah, they were all from the same village. They were all from Vrindavan, so they saw Krishna like that, just like their own from the their own kinsmen. But there were other Kshatriya kings there. There were these Kshatriya kings who were not so pious. They were not pious people, and they saw him. As they saw Krishna as the strongest ruler and as a chastiser. 
แล้วก็เขาก็แล้วที่นั่นก็มีกระสับด้วยเหมือนกันคาเชนปริยาที่มาที่มาเนี่ยเขาก็เห็นกริชนาว่าเป็นผู้ปกครองที่มีความแข็งแกร่งที่สุด And to to Krishna's parents, Nanda and Yashoda, he was like the most loving child. But to Kamsa, Kamsa is the king of the Bhoja dynasty. He appeared to be death personified. Kamsa was always worried that Krishna is going to come and kill him. So he had arranged this wrestling match. He thought it would that he would see Krishna killed. Actually, it's Kamsa who's going to be killed. And so Kamsa saw Krishna as the personification of death. So there was a class of people there. They they were not intelligent. To so to the unintelligent, he Krishna appeared like some incapable personality. People with no good brain, they cannot understand Krishna's powers and potencies. They think Krishna to be an ordinary person. So he appears to them like some incapable person. But to the yogis who were present. Krishna appeared to be the super soul. And to the members of the Vrishni dynasty, he was the most celebrated person. So Krishna was appreciated differently by all different kinds of people. So Krishna entered into the arena. He came in there into the wrestling arena. He came with Balarama and all his cowherd boyfriend. Now, when Krishna came in to the arena, then everyone had heard that Krishna had killed the big elephant, Kuvalaya Pida. So Kamsa understood. Wow, Krishna is very powerful. Because Kamsa was thinking that this Kuvalaya Pida would kill Krishna. So Kamsa became very afraid that this Krishna is going to kill him. And he could see Krishna and Balaram; they both had long arms. 
And they were very beautifully dressed. And they were attractive to all the people. It was like they were going to act on a stage. They, they dressed so nicely. It's like they dressed it to go on stage in front of all the people. So when they, when someone goes on stage, you know, they they dress to 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 take the attention of all the people. So all the people of the, the city of Mathura, they'd all come there to watch this wrestling match. And many of them, they could see Krishna, they understood Krishna was the personality of Godhead. And they would look on the face of Krishna as if they were drinking nectar. They could never be satisfied by looking at Krishna. They wanted to see Krishna more and more. So just seeing Krishna was like drinking nectar. They were just by seeing Krishna was giving them so much pleasure that uh, they, they were they, they were like thinking they're drinking nectar. But they were not only drinking the nectar by seeing his face, but they were also smelling the aroma. And they were licking like the taste of his body. And they were embracing him and Balaram with their arms. So they began to talk. All the people began to talk among themselves about these two brothers. Because for a long time they'd heard about the beauty and the activities of these two brothers, Krishna and Balaram. But now they were seeing them face to face. And they thought Krishna and Balaram must be two incarnations of Lord Narayan. They thought Lord Narayan is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and they thought Krishna and Balaram must be two incarnations who have appeared in Vrindavan. So the people of Mathura they were all discussing Krishna's pastimes. And 
because, because they'd heard how Krishna had come into Mathura and how he'd met Kamsa's laundry man and killed him and taken clothes and then he met Sudama and he met Kubja, he straightened Kubja. So these were all pastimes which were being told about Krishna in Mathura. So they began to discuss about the birth of Krishna, that he was born as the son of Vasudev. So he was born in Mathura, in the prison house of Kamsa. But he was being taken care of in the home of Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda in Goku. So then they spoke about the different pastimes which happened to Krishna when he was growing up as a child there in the home of Nanda Maharaj. First of all, there was the killing of the demon Putana, that evil witch woman who came to try to kill Krishna with poison on her breast. And then there was the killing of the Trinavata demon who came as a whirlwind and picked up Krishna but then he came crashing to the ground and he was killed. And then they talked about the pastime of how the two brothers, the two sons of Kuvera had been cursed into the form of Yamala Arjuna trees and Krishna delivered them. And there were other demons who Krishna killed. The people of Mathura were speaking about all the different pastimes Krishna had performed. Krishna killed the demon Sankachuta and then he killed Kesi, the, the, the proud horse demon. Then there was Denukasura and many other demons. They were killed by Krishna and Balaram in Vrindavan. And then Krishna had also saved all the cowherd men of Vrindavan when there was a forest fire. Krishna swallowed the fire to save all the people of Vrindavan. And Krishna punished the Kaliya snake who was poisoning the water of the Yamuna. And he told the Kaliya snake, you go from here, don't you come here and poison the water of the Yamuna, you cannot stay here. And 
And then Krishna also, the, the people of Mathura were talking about how Krishna took away the pride of Indra, the king of heaven. When Krishna wouldn't let the people of Vrindavan offer Indra Yagya, Indra became angry and he sent clouds to pour water on Govardhan and to drown all the people. So Krishna picked up the Govardhan hill with one hand and held it up for seven days and nights and saved all the people of Goku. He not, he, not only, he not only saved all the people, he saved all the cows there also. So the people of Mathura were remembering, they'd heard all these different stories about pastimes which had happened there. And then they heard about the gopis of Vrindavan, that they were also so pleased by Krishna's beauty and by his activities that they forgot the trouble of material life. The material world is so miserable, but the gopis of Vrindavan forgot about the misery because they were seeing Krishna so much. So simply because they were seeing Krishna and always thinking of him, they forgot all their tiredness of the material life. Then the people of the people of Mathura discussed about the Yadu dynasty. And they said because Krishna has been born in the Yadu dynasty, the Yadu dynasty would remain the most famous family in the whole universe. And then the people of Mathura began to talk about Lord Balaram and they spoke about his pastimes. And they said, but Lord Balaram, he also is very beautiful, he has beautiful lotus petal eyes. So this boy, this child, Balaram, he killed the pra Pralamba demon. And many other demons also Lord Balaram killed. So this way the people of Mathura were talking about all the pastimes of Krishna and Balaram. Then they heard the beating of drums telling people that the wrestling match is going to begin. So Kamsa had brought some of the, the greatest, most famous, strongest wrestlers to come to 
fight with Krishna and Balaram. So one of them, the one of the famous wrestlers, his name was Chanura, and he began to speak to Krishna and Balaram. So he said to them, oh, my dear Krishna and Balaram, we heard about your activities. Well, you're very famous, and the king has also heard about you, so he called you here. We have heard your arms are very strong. So the king and all the people who have come here today, they want to see a display of your wrestling skills. So you should be obedient and please the king. When the citizen pleases the king, then he gets all good fortune, he gets all blessings from the king. But if you don't do what the king wants, if you make the king unhappy, then the king will get angry. So I know you are cowherd boys, and I know, I've heard, that when you take care of the cows in the forest, you enjoy wrestling with each other. So we want that you will join with us in wrestling here today and then all the people here will be able to, uh, they'll be pleased, all the people including the king They'll all be pleased to see you wrestle with us. So Krishna could understand what Chanura was saying. He understood what his purpose was. No, Chanura, he wanted to make sure Krishna would, would, would take part in the wrestling match. He wanted that Krishna would not avoid it. So Krishna prepared himself to wrestle with Chanura. But Krishna also wanted to speak some words, first of all, to Chanura. So he spoke to him, he said, to, he said, you know, you are a subject of the king of the Bojas. In other words, you are a subject of King Kamsa. And you live in the jungle. 
แล้วก็อาศัยอยู่ในป่า And Krishna said, "We are also indirectly. We are also subjects of the king." So we want to please him as much as we can. So this offer of wrestling, it's a, it's a great favor of the. It's very kind of the king. To give us this chance to wrestle. But the point, we are just simply boys. Krishna and Balaram at this time they were I think eleven years old. So Krishna said, "We're just boys. We play in the forest of Vrindavan with our friends." And our friends are all our own age. So we like that kind of combat. That's nice because we're equal age, equal strength. So it's good fun. But for us to fight, the huge, big. Great wrestlers like you, it's not very fair. We don't think it will be very good for the audience to watch. It will, for us to fight you, it will not be according to religious principle. Because a fair fight is where the people are equal. If we're not equals, then it's not a very fair fight. So Krishna was telling the wrestlers. He was telling them, you know, you you shouldn't challenge us to fight. But the wrestlers, they they're not going to hear Krishna. They don't accept this. So Chanura, he says to Krishna. Chanura, he's the main spokesman for the wrestler. He says to Krishna, "Oh Krishna, my dear Krishna, we understand very well about you." He said, "We know you're not just a child, and you're not a young man." You are transcendental to everyone. And your big brother, your big brother Balaram, he is also transcendental to everyone. You just killed that big elephant, Kuvalaya Pida. He was that elephant was capable of fighting thousands of other elephants. But you killed him so easily. So we can see that you're you're very strong. 
So, so we think it's a good match for you to fight against the strongest wrestlers. So Chanura said, I will wrestle with you. And your brother Balaram, he can wrestle with Mushtika. So this is the end of the chapter, the killing of the elephant Kuvalaya Pida. So in the next chapter, we'll hear how Krishna kills the wrestlers and then he goes on to kill Kamsa. So this is the end of chapter 43. Right. Krishna has finished his Leela in Vrindavan and now he's come to Mathura and we will hear what happens in Mathura. Well, we're hearing already how he's in Mathura. And after Mathura, then we will hear the pastimes in Dwarka. Uh, so the the in, the interesting part in this chapter was where Krishna came into the arena and all the different people saw Krishna in different ways. Right. The wrestlers, they saw Krishna as a thunderbolt. But to the, the women, to the women, they saw Krishna as the most attractive male, as the personification of Cupid. And the people of Vrindavan, they saw Krishna as their own Brajbasi from their own village. To Kamsa, he saw Krishna as death personified. To the yogis, he was the super soul. And to the members of the Vrishni dynasty, he was the most celebrated descendant. Okay, so we will stop here. Is there any questions? Uh, okay, question. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay, Shaya Mataji. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, Dhanava Pranam. Please accept my humble obeisances. Mokori to Sira Prabhu Pan. Azaraha, Padiwa Mi Kun Thai, Thi Pen Kun Pudan Ha, Kau Tham Pang Ha, Pi Sung Pi Tok Me Dai, Azaraha, Kun Tham, Guru Maharaj, Hai Shwe Ani Pai, Fang Ho Ni Aha. คือเหมือนกับว่าทาง
พ้นจากการเว้นไว้ตายเกิดไปแล้วอะไรเงี้ยแล้วเท่าที่เรารู้กันมาว่าเหมือนอสวรรค์ของของโคดกับของวัยชนะว่าเนี่ยแตกต่างกันพี่ก็เลยเอตอบคําถามเขาไม่ได้ว่าคนที่เหมือนพักปรหันที่หลุดพ้นไปนิพพานแล้วเขาจะไปอยู่โลกไหนอะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะแล้วก็แตกต่างยังไงกับการหลุดพ้นโมกษะของวัยชนะว่าอะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะอาจารย์เข้าใจพี่ไหมโอเคค่ะขอบคุณค่ะฮาริกาชินะอืมกุลมาราชาคำถามนี้คือ in the Buddhism they say that when uh, they get liberation that mean heaven and they say that the heaven uh, this kind of liberation is free them from uh, circle of birth and death of this world and then she couldn't explain her that Uh, this kind of because we say that uh, uh, heavenly planet is not it doesn't mean that we will be free from this circle of birth and death. So what kind of liberation is they they really get for the Buddhism? And yes, how how can she explain this to her Thai friend? Well, if they bu Buddhism, their goal, you see, they, they think of the absolute truth is ultimately nothing, zero. So for them, they want to become, you know, they want to become the Buddha. And maybe that means entering into the Western land where everybody is the Buddha. That one kind of liberation for the Buddha. When they get liberation from the Buddha, it will be like that they will go into the world of the Buddha, the world of the Buddha, that is the place that is the Buddha, the Buddha, the Buddha. This is one of the things. So other people, other Buddhists, they just simply want nirvana to become nothing, to give up everything, to give up their individuality and their existence and become nothing because they think nothing is real, the world is not real and you are not real and the body is not real, so nothing is real. And they want to become nothing. So their goal is just to annihilate their existence. And then they may become they may become a mountain or they become a big tree. They stand as a tree for hundreds of years. That's the result of their austerities and their tendencies. But I think it's not a very good idea to try to preach to people about their religion. They should be willing to hear about Krishna consciousness. If they're not interested to hear about Krishna consciousness, then don't waste your time. Don't just talk about their 
philosophy. They should be, they must, they should be willing to hear about Krishna and about Krishna's teachings. But it's very difficult because people with a Buddhist background, they don't believe in God. So when we talk about God, it's, they can't understand because they don't believe, they don't have the concept of God in their theology. They never speak about God. So if they don't believe in God, they'll have a hard time to understand Krishna consciousness. They believe in Buddha. And usually their goal is to become Buddha. And they think oh, that's the, for them that is the perfection when they can become the Buddha. So we say, you should become the servant of Buddha. Don't become Buddha, become the servant of Buddha. We don't become Krishna. To become Krishna, that's very wrong. To think you can become Krishna, that's very bad, very wrong. But if you can become the servant of Lord Buddha, that is okay. So our, our teaching is to become the servant we're not God, we can't become God, but we can become the servant, we can do service for God. So this is very difficult for Buddhist people to understand. Because Buddhism is an atheistic philosophy. Lord Buddha came to cheat the atheists. Because they don't believe in God. So he said, okay, just follow me. Because these people were all atheists, they didn't believe in God, so Lord Buddha told them, just follow me, just do what I do. follow me. So they followed Lord Buddha. Uh, they practice, you know, the the different principles of Buddhism, not to kill any living entity, not to get angry, to be truthful and honest. <laughs> Okay, 
อย่าทำลายตัวอื่นให้ยังโกรธอะไรแอบบ so Lord Buddha tricked the people they followed him and in this way they made some advancement อันนี้ก็คือการที่พระพุทธเจ้าก็บอกเขาไปนะครับโกงพวกเขาไปแต่ก็คือทําให้พวกเขาคนในสมัยนั้นคือยอมรับได้แบบนั้นก็เลยบอกให้เขาเนี่ยคือยอมรับปัจจัยตรงนั้นไป so Lord Buddha taught them to uh, not to kill not to do any harm to any living entity พระพุทธเจ้าก็สอนบอกว่าอย่าอย่าให้ความเจ็บปวดหรืออย่าทำร้ายสิ่งมีชีวิต He taught He taught them ahimsa non-violence ก็คือชื่อปัจญาว่าหลักปัจญาอาหิมสะก็คือการไม่มีเบียดเบียน So ahimsa is not the highest principle of religion อาหิมสะเนี่ยไม่ถือว่าเป็นปัญญาสูงสุดของหลักศาสนา But it was all these people could it was as high as these people could understand แต่มันเป็นหลักปัญญาที่หลักปัญญาเพื่อให้คนในสมัยนั้นเข้าใจได้มากสุด They couldn't understand anymore เพราะไม่สามารถรับอะไรไปได้มากกว่านี้ So I don't encourage you to try to preach against their religion. You have to try to find people who are interested to know about Krishna consciousness. The Krishna consciousness is not just simply teaching ahimsa, but is teaching sanatan dharma, eternal religion. Sanatan means eternal. ศาสนาที่เป็นอมตะ I I don't think you're translating what I say Archana Yes Guru Maharaj eternal mean amata or tawon Okay So So I would encourage you like that Chaya, that you want to talk to people, you know, they have to be interested to hear about Krishna consciousness. Don't just preach against their philosophy, against their religion. Encourage them to chant Hare Krishna and to take prasada. Chanting Hare Krishna and prasada will help to purify them so that they can understand Krishna consciousness. Devotional service begins with the tongue. You use the tongue to chant and the the tongue to taste. So you chant Hare Krishna and you taste Krishna Prasada. That's the best way to begin spiritual life. การที่ต้นเสียสละใจเนี่ยเริ่มต้นจากลิ้นเพราะให้ให้ใช้ลิ้นในการสวดภาวนาพระนามแล้วก็รับประทานปรสาดัมแล้วจากนั้นเนี่ยก็จะเริ่มบริสุทธิ์ขึ้นแล้วก็จะสามารถเข้าใจเกี่ยวกับปรัชญาของประชาธิปไตยมากขึ้น Yes, Guru Mahar
but อาจารย์แต่พี่มีความสงสัยอะของเหมือนกับนิพพานของอุดเนี่ยแสดงว่าเหมือนกับมุกจากของเขาว่าเหมือนกับเขาเขาจะหลุดพ้นจากการเวียนว่ายตายเกิดจริงไหมอะไรเงี้ยอันนี้พี่สงสัยเองนะว่าว่าเพราะว่าเหมือนที่เราเรียนไปเหมือนจะพูดว่าเหมือนอคนที่ไปสวรรค์อะไรเงี้ยเมื่อเขาเสวยบุญเสร็จเขาจะกลับมาเกิดในโลกนี้ใช่ไหมแต่ทีเนี้ยอย่างพระอรหันต์ที่เขาเหมือนหลุดพ้นทางพุทธะที่เขาเหมือนเราเราเรียนกันมาตั้งแต่เด็กเนี้ยเป็นพี่เลยมีความสงสัยว่าอันนั้นเขาหลุดพ้นจริงไหมอะไรเงี้ยอาจารย์เข้าใจพี่ไหมอืมอาจารย์อืมอืมถามถามเพิ่มเติมให้หน่อยอืมค่ะก็ชีวะจะสดาวติงอะบาวเดตแต่เวนเดอร์บูดิสเดเซอร์ Liberation. That liberation. It that mean that they are they will be free from a uh, circle of birth and death, or they they will still be in in here. Well, the Buddhists cannot go into the spiritual world. They cannot enter into the spiritual world, so they cannot go beyond birth and death. They, they can go. They, the Buddhists they go up to the. There's a river between the material and the spiritual world, and they go up to that river between the material and spiritual world. And they can take a bath there, and then they come back in the material world. So they can go to higher planets. They can go up to higher planets, and they can have a very long life. But they cannot go out of the material world. Material world is, means birth and death. They will still be in the world of birth and death. So, so I told you there are different ideas about in Buddhism. Different, they have different ideas. Some people they talk about the wet, the West Land, go to the West Land, and they, then everybody's a Buddha. And other people, they just want to become nothing. <laughs> But we, they cannot go out the material world. Guru Maharaj, I understand. Thank you for your advice. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj and dear devotees. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. On Guru Sushila Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, my question is about the same topic. Uh, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Lila, chapter 17, text 145, Srila Prabhupada says, The spreading of the Hare Krishna mantra in the West has become successful because the young people were not offenders. And uh, then uh, he said, People in Western countries are more purified than offensive Mayavadis or atheistic, uh, atheistic uh, impersonalists. And the question is, uh, did these young people in Western countries not commit offenses against the deities, uh, the holy name, for example, because of their ignorance? And why are the offenses of the Mayavadis more serious? And could you explain uh, the difference between them, between these offenses? Okay. 
คำถามของอาจารย์นี้นะคะก็คือถามว่าอ,อันนี้มาจากหนังสือเจตนาจริตามิตาตรงคำอธิบายศิลปวัฒน์สงไข่คำอธิบายไว้ว่าอตอนที่ท่านเนี่ยส่งไปเผยแพร่เกี่ยวกับพระนามให้ที่โลกชาวให้ชาวตะวันตกเนี่ยปรากฏว่าชาวตะวันตกสามารถรับเอาพระนามแล้วก็สามารถนําเอาวิธีทางนี้มาปฏิบัติได้อย่างไรได้เพราะเขาไม่ไม่ได้ทําอาบัตแต่อย่างไรแต่ว่าสําหรับคนที่เป็นมายาวดีหรือว่าอยู่ที่อินเดียนะปรากฏว่าตรงนี้เนี่ยมันเป็นสิ่งที่ยากเพื่อให้เขาในยอมรับได้เพราะเขาเนี่ยทำอาบัตแล้วถามมันจะถามว่าอาบัตตรงนี้เนี่ยมันต่างกันอย่างไรมันทําไมถึงหนักกว่าไหมที่พวกมายาวดีทําหรือว่ายังไง So the Mayavadis are great offenders because they deny the supreme form of deny the supremacy of Lord Krishna and they say ultimately it's the Brahman which is the supreme And Krishna is coming from the Brahman. And they say God has no form, and they say God has no senses. So that means God is blind, and God is dumb, God is lame. So they, 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 they're, this is very offensive to talk like that. So, so the Mayavadi is a, we say Mayavadi Aparadi. He's an offender. Because he denies the spiritual form of the supreme Lord. And when Krishna comes into the material world, they say Krishna is just an ordinary person, and he's coming from the Brahman. He's and he's just the form of the mode of goodness. He's not transcendental. And they say the chanting of the holy name is just sentimental. They say it has it's not spiritual. So when Lord Chaitanya was present in Benares 500 years ago, the Mayavadis there they wouldn't even say his name because his name was Krishna Chaitanya, but they would just say, "Oh, that Sanyasi Chaitanya." They wouldn't say his his name as Krishna Chaitanya because they didn't like to say the holy name of Krishna. And so this is, this is a sign of offenses. When people don't want to chant Hare Krishna mantra, it means because they're offenders, they've committed a lot of offenses. They're not able, to, the holy name will not appear on their tongue. So the beginning of their spiritual life is when they actually begin to chant Hare Krishna mantra. So Lord, Lord Chaitanya met with the Mayavadi sannyasis in Benares. And he talked to them, and then he got them all to chant Hare Krishna. And once they chanted Hare Krishna, then he accepted them as devotees. And so some people, some Buddhists, they like chanting Hare Krishna. บางคนเนี่ยที่ชอบศาสนาบุตรบางคนที่ชอบการสวดมนต์นะคะเรื่องนี้ 
but they don't have the mood to be the servant. They're, think, they're chanting Hare Krishna, they're thinking they will become one, they will enter into the oneness, or they will become nothing. But people from the West, Prabhupada went to America and there were young people there and these young people were not very pious really, they were not vegetarian and they were, they were having drugs and they were having illicit sex but they chanted Hare Krishna. So they could take to chanting Hare Krishna immediately, but the, the Mayavadi sannyasis they couldn't do it. But these these people, young people in America, they did it by because they were just willing to hear. They just thought, you know, somebody somebody's teaching us. So they were open-minded and they had not committed any offences. They did not say, oh, God is not like this, God is not like that. They just were ready to hear from the, the devotee. <laughs> So people have to be willing to hear. That's the first step. If they're willing to hear, then we can we can tell them about Krishna. We can explain to them about Krishna consciousness. But if they say, if they come with their own ideas, if they have their own philosophy, oh, there's no God, this is not true, no, there's no God, we don't believe this, then they'll never learn anything. And they will just commit more offences. They will offend. They will say, oh, this is just maya, this is just sentiment, this is illusion, it's not real, you're fooling yourself. They will say so many things which are offences and it's not good for them. It, gives, it makes it bad for them and it's bad for us if we hear them offend Krishna. So Prabhupada was happy to preach to young people in the West because they didn't know anything, they were ready to hear and they accepted what he told them. But if you try to teach somebody who already thinks they know something, if they think they know something but they know it's all wrong, it's very hard to teach them. So we want we're going if we want to speak we have to we want to speak to people who are ready to hear. Not people who are just gonna argue and say, Oh no, I don't believe this, I don't believe that, oh no. And so then we waste our time and they will commit offences. Okay. Okay, Guru Next question from uh, Yogita. 
Oh, yeah? What's the question? Hi, Krishna Gurdjieff, I'm Bob and says, Gurdjieff, I want to ask, you know, when we have a negative feelings towards someone only because the person may have has ill behaved with us in the past and continues to only glorify themselves all the time and again passing some negative comments towards us then sometimes the ill feelings automatically come out how do i prevent that with it because it seems to be you know the Lord says, right in the Bhagavad Gita, Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu, it should be equally posed towards all, but just the mind just automatically generates these negative feelings. I don't know how to deal with such situations for this. <laughs> เราแต่รู้สึกไม่ดีกับคนนั้นโดยอัตโนมัติอันนี้เป็นไปได้ไงเวลาใครทําตัวแบบว่าชอบชมตัวเองอยู่นั่นแหละชมตัวเองอยู
บบว่าสามารถแยกแยะคนออกเป็นแต่ละประเภทนะคะว่านี้เนี่ยเป็นสาวกเลยนี่ไม่ใช่สาวกแล้วเราจะต้องอตอบสนองหรือว่าพูดคุยสนทนานี้อย่างไรแต่ว่าให้เราเนี่ยคิดคิดถึงความมีเกรชันในอยู่ในใจของทุกคนแต่ถ้าเกิดเราจะให้เราดูทุกคนเป็นเสมอภาคเนี่ยอันนั้นเนี่ยเป็นสาวระดับสูงต้องเป็นระดับแบบเราเจตนามหาปรบูนิตนันดาปรบูหรือว่าไฮดัสนักุระอะไรเงี้ยเพราะท่านจะมีเกิดที่จะมองเห็นทุกตรงชีวิตเท่ากันหมดได้อันนี้เนี่ยจะเป็นไปได้สําหรับเราถ้าเกิดเราได้พระเมตตาเมื่อจากกระชาเป็นอย่างมากเลยแต่ในขณะที่เรายังอยู่ในระดับนี้อยู่เนี่ยเราก็ต้องใช้วิจารณญาณในการพูดคุยกับบุคคลแต่ละประเภทนะคะโอเคกุลมาชอ่า one more last question from w a i s h n a v i Okay. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. This is my humble obeisance. Um, this is regarding uh, the uh, uh, Shaya Mataji's question related to that. I was previously thinking that the Buddhism, Buddhist people might go into the impersonal Brahma Jodi or something like that. But uh, now uh, I understood that uh, they are not crossing the Viraja River and uh, they are still in the material world. Uh, so you told there are two kinds of Buddhists, like one who wants to become Buddha, uh, and the other one uh, they they wanted to become nothing or something like that. So they they might become because their consciousness uh, like they want to become nothing. They might come back to the material world and become a big mountain or tree. But I could not understand what happens to the people who wants to become Buddha, like that. And also I am maybe if any. Maybe is it uh, correct, Guru Maharaj, that they they only benefit because they practice the Buddhist principles? Is like uh, they are not going to hellish planets. Maybe they can uh, at least they are safe from that. Maybe that's correct. Well, maybe they're safe from that. Depends how they speak about the, the Supreme Lord. Yeah. Maybe they. You know, maybe they don't do any harm to anybody. They don't do any good, but they don't do any harm. Yeah. And then, what happens to the Buddha? You know, I, what I heard from the Buddha is what they tell me is that there's a there's a there's a Western land where all the Buddhas go, and everybody's Buddha. <laughs> So that's their goal to to go to that place where everyone's a Buddha, and there's no man and there's no women. Everybody's a Buddha, and they go there, and then that's their goal to be there in the Western land. So I, I don't. This is their philosophy, not mine. I don't know any. This is what they tell me. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, very interesting. Previously, before I came to Krishna Conscious, I was reading a lot of Buddhism books uh, from the library in Bangkok, and I was also thinking maybe everyone will become Buddha like that. God, so oh, so very thankfully, Hare Krishna mantra saved me. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Yes. Yeah, everybody, that's their idea. Everybody is a, everybody is going to become Buddha. And what's Buddha's position? They say Buddha is not man and he's not God. He's Buddha. So they have that distinction, you know. They don't believe in God, they, and they say Buddha is not man and he's not God. He's Buddha. So you can't talk to them about a spiritual world or about God and God's energies. They don't believe in God. The whole the, for them the whole material world is illusion. We're not real. Nothing is real. So it's an atheistic philosophy. Okay. Yes, Thank you so much. Alright, Archana, we finished there. Yes, yes, so much. Broji, I think. Uh, Andra Broji is in stand, but he is the translator, so I don't know how to take his question. Is that um, what? No question, Andra. No. Okay. 
project. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I'm asking from some of this point. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you for the nice class uh, and association. Maharaj, what we see is majority of the Buddhists, or I mean, even from the, you know, uh, impersonalist background, uh, they are also innocent class of people, right? I mean, you know, we see that many of the Buddhists, they, they come, they worship, the, you know, Lord Buddha, like in Lupini Park, they offer incense, they like to offer some fruits and flowers. And uh, although they are worshipping Buddha, Lord Buddha, and they say they are Buddhist, but there's a lot of uh, devotional, uh, you know, sentiments there, right? Uh, and uh, I mean, I also see that, you know, in, uh, in like, you know, my father, he, you know, I mean, some people there in, a, in the impersonalist group, but, you know, although the leader is there, but they have a lot of uh, <laughs> devotional attributes there and then you know if, if that is genuine then uh, you know and then they are not creating offenses that they when the, when devotees present them the devotional idea then they are ready to accept uh, krishna consciousness also right Man? not usually <laughs> i never i never found any buddhists so we <laughs> so easily accept krishna consciousness it's just very hard for them to understand the concept of God. Of God. Yes, huh? But okay, but I mean, many of us we are coming from. I mean, I was also coming from, a, you know, like you know, maybe you know, impersonalist background, or maybe how can we say it was all hot spot, but maybe ignorance class, right? But we were doing everything, and it was mostly. Impersonal and you know. Yeah, I was also impersonal, but the, we, we were not very, uh, we just didn't know any better, you know. But at, at the same time, I believed in God, you know, uh, the concept of God. I brought up in a Christian background, so the concept of God was certainly there. I certainly had belief in God, but. You know, now you know you're dealing with atheists, hardcore atheists. Yes, just, yes. Just deny the existence of any supreme being controller. It's a difference. Somebody who just you 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 don't know anything. We're just searching for the truth. You know, we're looking for and that you know. So we read impersonalism or like Vaishnavi. She read the Buddhist book. She was looking for something. So she was reading about Buddhism. She was searching. So like that, if somebody's open-minded, they're willing to hear, then it's different. But if somebody's already thinking, no, this is it, I only believe this, I don't believe anything else, but then it's very difficult. Yes, yes, I, I agree, I agree. Thank you. You know, you're yeah, I think if, we are, if, we are, if we are eager and we are, you know, we are open, we are trying out different things, then it's much more easier, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like your father, he's open-minded, he'll go to the temple, he'll sit and listen to classes and like that, you know. If people are open-minded, you know, if they're willing to sit in here, if they take prasadam and chant Hare Krishna, then it's a lot better. But of course, you do get Mayavadis also doing that, you know, they bring their Mayavadi ideas in, you know, they chant Hare Krishna, they eat prasadam, and, but you know, it's also, their goal is still Mayavadi, you know. <laughs> They've, you know, they've, they've, they've got that in their brain, they're programmed, you know, that ultimately it's all one. <laughs> and this is just a means to the oneness. <laughs> yes, man. So, thank you. Hare Krishna. <laughs> okay, Guru okay, Maharaj. Anyway, this is a, this is Prabhupada's mission, delivering the message of Lord Chaitanya in the Western world to save the world from impersonalism and voidism. These two philosophies, Nirvishesha and Shunyavadi, impersonalism and voidism. So Prabhupada was preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya, Goravani Precharine, 
Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine. Srila Prabhupada was, on behalf of his spiritual master, was preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya to deliver people from impersonalism, the Mayavadi philosophy, and voidism, the philosophy of Buddhism. Okay, so thank you very much, Archana, for your translation. Thank you very much. We thank all the devotees for their questions and participation. And we pray you all stay healthy. I hope to see you all next week. Srila Prabhupada ki. Yeah. Go back to Brinda ki. Yeah.